showing that we're live streaming. Can I start this? Yeah, sorry. I always wait till it goes over full on my end, but okay. now you're set for my end. Whenever you're ready. I will call regular town board meeting number six to order and ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Councilman Madigan. You're muted, Mike. Still here. Councilman Bain. Here. Councilman Marston. Here. Gatti. Here. Supervisor. Here. Right, the invocation is going to be given by Trinity United Methodist Church, Pastor Kevin, and the uh, Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Councilman Jen Bainey. Please rise. <coughs> Floor is yours, Pastor Kevin. Thank you for having me and let us pray. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the opportunity to serve this community of Grand Island tonight through everything that we all have to share and say and inform. And we just pray your blessing um, upon this meeting. May it uh, make it uh, all the better for the residents of Grand Island. May it keep us secure and safe. And may we truly go forward as a community standing together. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So that brings us to the portion of meeting for public comments on agenda items only. If you would like to speak on the two items that are public hearings, which is the police reform action plan and local law intro number two of 2021, please hold your comments until that point. But if you'd like to speak on uh, any of the agenda items, uh, Mr. Degatti will let you in. Okay, first up, we've got uh, Nicole Gerber. Thank you, Tom. Uh, good evening, board. My name is Nicole Gerber. I'm speaking tonight regarding the agenda item from the Grand Island School District requesting to be exempted from the current town moratorium on solar array projects. When moratoriums are declared by municipalities, the purpose is to cease the development of specified projects or buildings due to government or community concerns that warrant the review of current municipal laws, codes, or land use within that municipality. The town board unanimously passed a moratorium ceasing the building of industrial solar array projects on Grand Island at the January 19th town board meeting. This decision was based on many factors. The three industrial solar arrays built that do not meet the town's current law, two potential solar projects already presented that have development plans with multiple issues, and just as importantly, all the solar projects built uh, with the concerns, questions, and anger and lawsuits that have arisen. The town's decision to enact a moratorium is the right decision from the community, the neighborhoods, the people, and the character of Grand Island. The school district's attempt to say why the moratorium does not apply to them by stating that their solar array project is not in a residential area is incorrect. Around that proposed solar farm are homes and businesses, just like all the other areas across the island, and just like where all the other solar farms have already been built or being proposed to be built. That area is no different than the others. Interestingly, in the land use plans of the Grand Island Comprehensive Plan, the land west of the New York State Thruway is noted to be designated for rural residential. No industry, no large scale business. The land use as stated in the plan is to maintain the country character to provide lands for agriculture, larger private lots and conservation. In fact, when searching the 115 pages of the comprehensive plan, there are only six mentions of the word solar with five referencing the use of solar panels on residential and public buildings. And one of those actually specifically states promote solar on town buildings and schools. The sixth mention of solar is actually under the future land use exercise where it states, and this is quotes from the public, solar farms that meet a standard of regulations that are designed by the community. In the four pages of the comprehensive plan that maintain, excuse me, that contain um, specific community feedback, solar farms are not mentioned, they're not asked for, and they're not included in the determination of land uses or industrial uses on the island. 
As the town spent years, money, and citizen time and participation to update the island's comprehensive plan, including this plan in the solar review process should also be a factor as the town now takes the time to assess the solar law updates needed and to identify the viability and any benefits to having industrial solar throughout the town's neighborhoods. The Grand Island School District is a member of the community, as we all are, and they are not above the laws and decisions of the town board. If community members and solar array companies are currently waiting through the moratorium as the town reviews the necessary solar law updates, then the Grand Island School District can wait as well. Other municipalities in the region, across the state and across the country are taking the time through similar moratoriums to ensure that the placement of industrial solar is right for their communities. Grand Island Solar Project Moratorium was enacted to do that exact same thing. If the school district cares for the community and if they care for its citizens in every decision they make, then they will patiently wait as everyone else is for the town government to do what is right for the citizens of the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Next, speaker, Dave Riley, you're up next. Please be aware that we're trying to hold comments to three minutes or less. Great, thank you. Uh, dear Town Board, Superintendent Brian Graham's request of the Town Board to confirm that it is not subject to the town's solar moratorium is frankly offensive, and it indicates a public servant in the role of service to the community who is not representing the public interest. Superintendent Graham cites legal precedent to argue that the school board should not have to follow the Town Board's solar moratorium. From the case that he references, he cites that the schools and churches have enjoyed special treatment, and that therefore, according to his logic, they should be able to go ahead with their solar project. Among other arguments, he claims that the proposed site is not in a residential area, and therefore they should be able to move ahead with their industrial development. Dr. Gerber just demonstrated just how ridiculous or ignorant this claim is, but let me add that there's a home located within 250 feet of the proposed industrial site, a home that was built in 1907. How insulting <coughs> to suggest that a Grand Island home that has been surrounded by farming for more than 100 years is not going to be affected by this. The school district letter claims that property values won't change, even though research in 2020 on the effect of utility scale solar arrays on housing prices found that prices of homes within a tenth of a mile of solar installations went down by 7%. Schools and churches have historically received special treatment conditional upon them serving the community and the common good. The Grand Island School District's request to the board flies in the face of this because the whole reason for this solar moratorium is to create a better solar law that addresses many of the past shortcomings of our regulations. As someone who's on the town's committee reviewing the solar law, I can report that we are looking at questions like, how do we create more environmentally healthy solar installations? How can we reduce impacts on neighbors and on the broader community? How do we make sure that the corporations building these solar installations do not pollute our soil or leave debris and refuse behind when the project is no longer making them money? Superintendent Graham's letter is a way of saying that he doesn't care about these questions. He does not care about the concerns that have been raised by the community about solar installations and that he should be above the law with regard to the solar moratorium. This request of Superintendent Graham's on your agenda tonight is the worst kind of elitism a public servant who is attempting to be treated differently from everyone else, who wants to be able to act without regard for the public interest or the public good, and who claims to be above the law. Everyone who was involved in making this request should be ashamed for attempting to exploit this loophole. Please reject the school district's claim and send a clear message that the town board is here to serve the citizens and the community of Grand Island, not those who seek special treatment and favoritism. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, David. Ms. Harris, you're up next. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, good evening. So um, I am also speaking in reference to solar. Um, there may be questions. I'm not fully sure on your process. So if you have questions and I'm allowed to answer them, I will uh, to the best of my ability. But um, Grand Island uh, School District has been working with Nexus Renewables and moving forward with the solar project. Um, like we do projects in the past, it's usually things that are voted for, on by the community uh, and doesn't really go to the town um, for approval. But given that we would need uh, site plan approval and I also believe a special use permit, we are bringing this forward to the town, just trying to make sure we have a full understanding of the moratorium, as well as asking 
for confirmation of our exemption if we are exempt. Um, we would like to move this project forward, but we don't want to uh, receive hiccups on the back end once we've collected all of our information. So that was really why we put this before the town. Uh, Dr. Graham was not able to be here tonight. So I am here on the school district's behalf. Um, I also would like to state that we put many things in not only the RFP, but the actual um, draft legal agreement and reference to the decompositioning of the site area and what our expectation was. And we did use the information that uh, the town had previously provided to us in reference to where we stood with um, solar projects and um, things that had not been included in the past that they suggested we move forward with. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I know um, Ruby, Peter, in relation, I can answer that for you. In relation to the questions, if the town board has specific questions, we'll address that when we get to that portion. Of okay. The and Supervisor Whitney can clarify anything else if I missed it. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Pariso. Good afternoon. My name is Carmen Pariso. I too sit on the committee regarding solar uh, legislation in Grand Island. I just wanted to reiterate kind of the same sentiment Dave Riley and Nicole Gerber had essentially that the town board has elected to put a moratorium on solar development for six months to give the committee the time it needs to determine if additional regulation is needed and if so, what that regulation should be composed of. Um, I think the school board attempting to move forward and not pay attention to that moratorium is pretty reckless. There are serious questions that need to be answered regarding what type of regulation needs to be put forward regarding solar projects. If you look at the additional or the projects that currently exist on the island, uh, for solar, they don't seem to be regulated nearly to the extent that they should be. So I just wanted to speak out in opposition to the school board's plan to move forward regarding uh, the current moratorium in place. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parisa. Okay, um, Mr. Overhaul. Yes, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Mark Overhaul. I'm actually uh, a member of the um, of the uh, Buffalo Solar team that worked with um, uh, work with Nexus on the uh, on the project. So after seeing uh, the comments, I think I'm going to go ahead and defer to Mr. Sorge. Is that, is that how you pronounce it, sir? I just want to make sure I'm pronouncing his name. Sorge. <laughs> okay, Peter. I'll just, <laughs> Mr. Peter. Um, and uh, uh, I, I just thought that, I just wanted to briefly state, though, that I thought that based on my reading and understanding of the moratorium, that the exemption that the school district was claiming that it fell under was an exemption that the town put in the moratorium. So if if that exemption had no validity, then I don't understand why it was included. Um, but that was just, a, as I said, just a curiosity on my part. But I'll defer to uh, Mr. Peter. And Peter, you're up next, so have at it. Yes, hi, uh, Peter Sorge. Um, I. I'm the project attorney, I represent Nexus. So I'm not speaking on behalf of the school district, just to be clear, but I am speaking on behalf of the project. And there are some very strong statements before and we're not gonna get no back and forth. That's not the intent here. Um, the one comment I'll address is, it was said, oh, we're going through a loophole. We're not going through a loophole. It's specifically the law. It's the state law that, that states that a school district is not subject to a moratorium. Um, we are going to go through the process, the zoning process. So if there are things that need to be modified as you're going forward with the new solar law, we'll have that knowledge and develop that into our plan to the maximum extent we can. Um, I did listen to the work session. I know that you are getting a legal opinion on this. Um, I, it's, it's a pretty clear legal issue. So I'm, I'm pretty confident what that opinion will be. Um, but again, it's, this is not something where it's the town board with, with discretion over this issue. It's specifically called for in state law and the case law that there is um, preferential treatment and in some cases even total immunity from zoning. We're not suggesting immunity from zoning. We'll go through the process, but we are not subject to the moratorium. And again, it's not a loophole. It's not a tactic. It's just simply the law. Um, I'll answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Peter. 
And just so everybody understands, this is actually the comment period. So we're going to discuss this later in the meeting, just so everybody un clearly understands that. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on um, during the public comment period on agenda items only? I don't see anyone right now, Tom. Okay, John, it looks like we're ready to move on here. meeting closed. It brings us to item number five, the public hearings. The first item is the police reform action plan. I will ask the clerk to read the pertinent part of the roll of the order. Notice is hereby given that a public information meeting will be held on Monday, April 5th, for the purpose of obtaining, obtaining public input and comments on the proposed police reform action plan. All interested persons may attend at said time and place and be heard thereon. Anyone wish to speak with respect to the police reform action plan? And again, we're just asking that you hold your comments to three minutes or less. Okay, David Pratt and Celia Bacone, you guys are up first. Hi, uh, my name is Dr. David Pratt, and uh, I'm a New York State licensed psychologist with over 40 years of experience, um, a resident of Grand Island, and also a member of the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board here on Grand Island. I'd like to thank Mr. Whitney and the Grand Island Police Department for the work that you've done with respect to Governor uh, Cuomo's executive order uh, requiring the review, the review of police forces that are funded in New York State. And I'm pleased to see that a community advisory board or what we can um, call a CAB is among your recommendations. Um, if properly conducted, I believe a community advisory board can yield a number of benefits for our Grand Island Police Department and the citizens of Grand Island. First and foremost, I believe a community advisory board will greatly enhance the transparency and collaboration that we need in order to build confidence and trust between the Grand Island Police Department and the citizens they serve on Grand Island. In addition, if properly done, I believe a community advisory board will help us develop policies and procedures that will bring long-term benefit to our community police force as well as the citizens in Grand Island. However, I wanna highlight some possible omissions in your draft regarding the community advisory board and urge you to include these specifics in your revised document. Number one, please address the makeup of the community advisory board. Specifically, I urge you to make the appointment process transparent and collaborative. I hope you will make a public announcement regarding the recruitment process for those seeking to serve on the community advisory board. I trust you will have an interview process with all community advisory board candidates and make a decision based solely on competence and merit and not on political affiliation or influence in town affairs. Number two, I urge you to be specific regarding the composition of the Community Advisory Board. I believe the Community Advisory Board should include broad representation of Grand Island stakeholders, including minority representation, representation from the religious and spiritual community, mental health professionals, representatives of not-for-profit social service agencies, members of our for-profit business community, as well as a GI citizen member at large. I ur number three, I urge you to guarantee that the Community Advisory Board has full access to Grand Island Police Department records, including policies and procedures, hiring decisions, training, citizen complaints, and the disciplinary processes. Number four, I urge you to empower the Community Advisory Board with a legitimate voice equal to that of the other members of the Grand Island Police Department administration. Number five, finally, I urge you to be specific regarding the number of meetings the Grand Island Police Department will have with the Community Advisory Board on an annual basis. With a rep recommendation, there be no less than four quarterly meetings with the GI Police Department administration and the Community Advisory Board. 
Thank, Thank you, you for your kind consideration of these recommendations. I have to cut you off. Okay. Uh, would you please submit your comments in writing to us? I find them very helpful and we do want to incorporate them. Thank you very much. I'll be pleased to do that. Thank you. Thanks. Celia, floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Celia Spacone, PhD, uh, licensed psychologist and resident of Grand Island. I'd like to express my appreciation to Supervisor Whitney for leading the process and the input of citizens uh, that were gathered together by Stephanie Coward and local police law enforcement for being willing to begin this self-examination process. The draft report is a good start and I would ask for the following considerations. First, we should ensure that all complaints about law enforcement are reviewed, even if from another agency or towards another agency uh, that is serving us on Grand Island and that that report gets back to the Grand Island Police, the uh, resolution of that. Secondly, I would uh, recommend that CIT training be done for all Grand Island Police if they have not received it from another agency, another law enforcement agency. Although it's always better to experience this as a team and it might be worth redoing, at least they all should have the basic knowledge. The recruitment that, that occurs must focus on ethnic and racial diversity expansion of our police force. I think we should uh, enforce use of a body cam and dashboard cams, making those mandatory. I, I think the transparency approach that is being adopted by the city of Syracuse and Buffalo um, is very worthwhile for us to, to consider. And I know this is a lot to, to bite off in our first um, uh, swipe at this, but it could be implemented in phases uh, under the guidance of the community advisory board. Under this transparency plan, the officer who stops someone must provide their name, their rank, reason for the stop, uh, and if there is no arrest, give them, a, the individual, a card with contact information. If they are uh, seeking to search the vehicle, the person must understand that they can refuse that and the consent of the person should be documented in the recording. I think the community advisory board is excellent. I would just ask for more specificity on recruitment the selection process, the number of meetings, the duties and responsibilities. We need positions representing various stakeholders and areas of expertise, including diverse cultural, ethnic and racial groups, the mental health community and the business community. I think the community advisory board is critical to making this a real process with continued growth to make Grand Island a truly um, accepting racial and uh, uh, ethnic justice community. Thank you for your time and for your work on this project. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Celia. Um, Stephanie. Good evening. My name is Stephanie Cowart. I am a resident of Grand Island. And I'd first like to say thank you to Supervisor Whitney for your willingness to discuss a myriad of community concerns dating back to June of 2020. And these concerns were brought about due to the Black Lives Matter movement at a critical time to address systemic racism and to avoid crisis situations. Right now, Black Lives Matter as well as American democracy are on trial and the whole world is watching. Reform is of paramount importance. Grand Island must seriously address and prevent the mistreatment and killing of black, brown, Asians, Pacific Islanders, indigenous and poor people by those who are sworn to protect and serve them. Grand Island has an opportunity to be in the forefront of this reformation. And I offer the following comments. Um, as amendments to the Grand Island Police Reform Action Plan. I see where there's a structure in, <coughs> in the town of Grand Island Police Department and they, they identify two other officers who are otherwise certified. 
I would recommend that there be specificity as to what does otherwise certification entail and how does one qualified qualified to be a member of the Grand Island Police Department as otherwise certified. I also recommend that all complaints revolving, uh, involving any officer elevate to the commissioner of police or the town supervisor. Grand Island is uniquely policed by five different agencies we would like to see more coordination among these agencies so that when we come to the town and ask questions, we're not told that we weren't involved so we don't know what's going on. We also propose continuous relevant in-person training from qualified sources, uh, specifically training in equity and diversity, um, mental health de-escalation, and training to enhance diversity on the police force, as uh, was stated by Dr. Celia Spacone. Accountability and transparency make police disciplinary hearings public, uh, require the use of body and dashboard cameras by patrol deputies. We also believe that um, officers should provide their name, rank, and command at the onset of any questioning or any traffic stop. And again, further details to be hashed out between the community advisory board. I have to echo the sentiments of Dr. David Pratt regarding the community-based uh, advisory board. And for me, that, that's it. And thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this evening. Thank you, sir. Don, that's all I had on the queue. So unless there's people who didn't respond to the message, second, like second to speak. time, is there anyone else wishing to speak with respect to the police reform action plan? For the third and final time, is there one, any, anyone else wishing to speak with reform to, with respect to the police reform action plan? <clears throat> the public hearing closed. I'll entertain a motion that we adopt the police reform action plan. So moved. Motion by Councilwoman Jen Bainey. Is there a second? Second for discussion. Second by Councilman Madigan. And the question, Mike. So I'm just wondering, should we just have a quick meeting just to discuss some of the feedback and then then um, if there's any further amendment, I'm not sure what, what it involves to make an, any other changes. Could you kind of explain that, John? Is there any- my, my intent is that this be a living and breathing document, that it will be changed. There will be continual changes to it as issues arise. So my intent is to adopt what we have tonight, and then we will work to add in the comments that we had, that we received tonight, which we felt were very, very helpful. And, uh, a lot to be included. I think we've got some great ideas from uh, all the people that spoke this evening, and I do want to uh, incorporate those. Okay, so maybe we could put it on the next workshop agenda, just so that we cover the feedback and just kind of, or or we have a separate meeting with Stephanie to, which might be better. Okay, I think that's but a living document. I, I I agree. It should always be continuously improved. Okay. 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 So we have a motion and a second. Um, anything else further on discussion on that? Roll call. Um, recommendations to submit them in writing. I did. Uh, I guess, and then again, I would like to reiterate that if you did make your comments, would you please submit them in writing to me so that we do have a, an accurate record of them and we can incorporate them into our plan. Great. Baining? Aye. Madigan? Aye. Carson? Aye. 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 Second public hearing we have tonight is local law intro number two of 2021 to amend chapter 180 of the town code regarding the historic preservation advisory board. And I'll ask the clerk to read the pertinent part of the notice. Notice is hereby given that the town board shall hold a public hearing on April 5th, 
for the purposes of considering and possibly adopting a local law amending chapter 180 of the town code regarding the historic preservation advisory. At the time and place that above, all members of the public shall be heard. At this time, is there anyone wishing to speak with respect to local law intro number two of 2021? We do, June, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, the Preservation Board is, is asking for this change in the law. Uh, it would be section eight, and uh, it simply indicates that the criteria that we would be using to identify historic properties on the island would uh, be met uh, by the Secretary of the Interior Standards. And it makes us more eligible for opportunities to look for grant money uh, and to be named then as a, an organization that is eligible for grant money that we are not eligible for at the moment. So thank you for taking this up. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Not that I see supervisor. For the second time, is there anyone else wishing to speak? For the third and final time, anyone wishing to speak with respect to local law intro number two of 2021? At this point, I'll declare the public hearing closed and I'll entertain a motion to amend chapter 180 of the town code as per the draft copy that you have in your packet. So moved. Second. second. Motion by Mike Madigan, second by Pete <coughs> Any discussion? Roll call. Madigan? Aye. Marston? Aye. 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 Thank you, June. Thank you. Thanks, June. Thank you. Hey, June. Uh, item number six is uh, minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of workshop meeting number eight from March 8th, 2021. Approve the minutes of workshop meeting number nine from March 15th of 2021. And approve the minutes of regular meeting number five from March 15th, 2021. So moved. Motion by John Bain. Second. Second by Pete Marston. Any discussion? Roll call. Bain. Aye. 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 Item number seven is the consent agenda. On tonight's consent agenda, we have the meeting minutes from the Board of Architectural Review from February 16th, 2021. The meeting minutes of the Historic Preservation Board from February 26, 2021. The Senate, the State of New York, Senator Sean M. Ryan. Uh, American Rescue Plan and the Golden Age Center Facility Usage Report from February of 2021. I'll take a motion to accept uh, to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Motion by Pete Myerson. Second. Second by Tom Bugatti. Any discussion on that? Roll call. Myerson? Aye. Bugatti? Aye. Madigan? Aye. Bain? Aye. Aye. Communications from the town board, item number eight from Supervisor John Whitney. Item number one is a monthly supervisor's report from January 2021 and February 2021. That's in your packet. That is for information only. No action required. Item number two is a resolution authorizing a notice of intent to act as lead agency for the Long Road Distribution Facility at 2780 Long Road. The uh, draft resolution is in your packet. I'll entertain a motion to approve the resolution. So moved. Motion by Mike Madigan. Second. Second by Tom Degatti. Any further discussion on this? Roll call. Madigan? Aye. Degatti? Aye. Bainey? Aye. Harston? Aye. Whitney? Aye. Item number three. In your packet, you have an application, a special events permit application from Charles Andy Glapper Memorial Expansion Committee for the dedication ceremony at 2133 Grand Island Boulevard on June 5th, 2021. I'll entertain a motion to approve this application. So moved. Motion by Pete Myerson. Second. Second by Mike Madigan. Any discussion on this? Roll call. Myerson. Aye. Edigan? Aye. 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 Item number four is a special events permit application also. This is from Soma Cure Wellness Center 
to do outdoor yoga in the town commons from April 1st, 2021 to September 30th, 2021. I'll entertain a motion to approve the special events permit application. So moved. Motion by Tom McGaddy. Second. Second by Mike Madigan. Any discussion or questions? Roll call. Tagati? Aye. Madigan? Aye. Danny? Aye. Arston? Aye. 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 Item number nine from Councilwoman Jen Bay from the Traffic Safety Advisory Board, TE9 changes. Jen, you have the floor. For this matter, because I talk too much sometimes, I told uh, Highway Superintendent Crawford he could speak. To explain this, uh, to explain what's before you all. Dick, can you unmute? Yes, from the last traffic board meeting or last month, there were some um, changes that were asked by us to make to the details by the county. So uh, Eric Thompson from the board uh, went through it with a um, red pen, made the changes that were presented to you and they need to be approved by the board in order for the next action to take place. Any so questions? Motion to uh, approve the changes as noted in your packet. So moved. Motion by John Bainey. Second. Second by Mike Madigan. Any further discussion on that? Roll call. Bain? Aye. Madigan? Aye. Arston? Aye. Gotti? Aye. Whitney? Aye. Second item from Councilwoman Jen Bainey is the authorized supervisor assign the professional services agreement from digital surveillance solutions for the safety and security contract. Um, in your packet, you have uh, the, the professional services agreement. And I'll entertain a motion to approve this, to supervise and assign this uh, pending legal review. So moved. Motion by John Bainey. Second. Second by Peter Marston. Any further discussion on this? There, uh, there's no significant substantive changes to what was before you other than um, uh, really getting it into a format that would work well for both the service provider and our town. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Welcome. Amy? Aye. Marston? Aye. Madigan? Aye. Gaddy? It's coughing. Sorry. I said I. Sorry. <laughs> aye. aye. Bullfrog. Item number 10 on our agenda tonight is from the Department of Engineering and Water Resources, Robert H. Westfall, town engineer. Uh, on March 30th, uh, Bob sent out uh, an email regarding um, equipment. Actually, March 29th came from John Podlucky and was forwarded regarding surplus equipment. And I'll entertain a motion to uh, these items are deemed surplus and not needed. And I'll entertain a motion to auction these items off. So moved. So moved. Second. I'll this one to Mike Madigan as a motion and a second as John Bainey. Any discussion on that? Roll call. Madigan? Aye. 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 Harston? Aye. Gotti? Aye. Aye. Second item from Bob Westall, Town Engineer, is award the contract from the Sanitary Sewer Evaluation Study. Year 9, um, Honorable Town Board, on March 31st, 2021, the following bids were received for the above reference contract. From the contract was United Survey, base bid $1,163,580. There were four subsequent bids going all the way up to $1,585,585. Our consultant has reviewed the bids and recommend award to United Survey Incorporated in the amount of $1,163,580. I'll take a motion to, to award that project. So moved. Motion by Tom Bugatti. Second. Second by Mike Madigan. Any discussion on those? This is an ongoing item that we have. Uh, we have, we're currently under an order on consent with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. And these are items that we have outlined with them. And it's part of our plan to correct sanitary sewer overflows. Just for information. Um, roll call. Bugatti? Aye. Madigan? Aye. Bainey? Aye. Arston? 
Aye. Whitney. Aye. Item number three says it's from uh, Bob Wessel. It's actually from our highway superintendent, but we're going to leave it in the queue that it's in. This is an uh, authorization for the supervisor to sign the agreement with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation for the Grand Island Tree Inventory and Community Forestry Management Plan, contract number DECO1 whatever all those numbers are. Job number M-235. I'll entertain a motion to approve this. So moved. <laughs> motion by Sam Bainey. Second. Second by Mike Madigan. Any comments, questions, concerns, discussion? Good work so far, everyone. Yes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Crawford, for putting that Good together. Good job, Dick. Yep. Roll call. Bainey. Aye. Madigan. Aye. Marston. Aye. 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 Item number four is from is the New York State DOT compliance review documentation. Uh, Honorable Town Board attached, please find the civil rights assurances, uh, limited, limited English proficiency policy, equal op employment opportunity policy, minority with women business enterprise policy, and disabled business enterprise policy. If the state of New York Department of Transportation requires to be accepted by the town of Grand Island and included in any project receiving federal financial assistance, Bob is requesting that the supervisor be authorized to sign the assurances and policy statements with the approval of the town attorney. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Motion by Mike Madigan. Second. Second by Pete Marston. No. Uh, any discussion? Roll call. Madigan? Aye. Marston? Aye. Amy? Aye. Daddy? Aye. Whitney? Aye. Item number 11 from Parks Maintenance Crew Chief Thomas Dorman, a full time hire. Parks Department requires permission to hire the following employee full time under the Teamsters Union contract. Stephen Marziga is a Parks Maintenance Worker 2, effective date April 6, 2021, status full time and rate of pay of $18.66 per hour. I'll entertain a motion to hire Mr. Marziga. So moved. moved. Motion by Pete Marston. <coughs> Second. By Patty. Any discussion? Roll call. Marston? Aye. Gaddy? Aye. Aye. Haney? Aye. Whitney? Aye. Item number two is uh, status change and rate of pay changes for new hires from the Parks Department again. Request permission to change the rate of pay and pay status of, of the following employees listed there. There's four employees listed. I'm not going to read them all. And then this, the other item is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, first one was to request the permission to change the status for a following employee that's a uh, parks mechanic. Then there was uh, pay changes for <coughs> Currently on the books and status, moving them from part time to seasonal. And then they request permission to hire the following employees. There's a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight names on there. Our chain of motion to approve uh, the request of Tom Dorak for the hirings and status changes. So moved. Motion by Mike Madigan. Second. Second by John Bainey. On the question. Just for discussion, I think we just need to be clear. We talked about it a bit in the workshop um, with respect to the one particular employee that was kind of a, a deviation from the typical scale. Um, so I'm okay with it, but I want to be clear that I that it's because of the particular facts here and that this isn't something that the board is going to, at least not that I'm going to make a habit out of approving. So no, I agree. I would agree with Tom. Okay. Roll call. Madigan? Aye. Bainey? Aye. Marston? Aye. Gaddy? Aye. Aye. Item number 12 from the Code Enforcement Officer. First item on their, under their list is a tower permit renewal for Crown Castle at 2041 Bedell Road on the bike path. The uh, project has been inspected. There are no changes. I'll entertain a motion to renew the application for a tower permit. So moved. Motion by Pete Marston. Second. Second by John Bainey. <clears throat> Any discussion on that? Roll call. 
Marston? Aye. Gaining? Aye. Edwin? Aye. Gatting? Aye. Winning? Aye. Item number two is a status change. Changing the play <coughs> kind of seasonal. Uh, I'd like to request a town board change the employment status of employee Robert Hassett from part time to seasonal status for the period not to exceed five months at his current rate of pay. Request this change be put into effect on May 3rd, 2021. Last till November 1st, 2021. Now, uh, I know we, we, we had dispensation from oh, the county, sorry. so I changed it back. Okay. I went through that one today. Uh, it's noted on your, it's crossed off and noted on your thing is June 2nd, but we had dispensation from the county to allow us to move back 30 days. So move. Motion by Pete Marston. Second. Second by Mike Madigan. Roll call. Marston. Aye. Madigan. Aye. Bainey. Aye. Daddy. Aye. 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 Third item is a special use permit renewal from Glen Wallace of 917 North Colony Road for a bed and breakfast. The premise was inspected. It remains unchanged. I'll entertain a motion to renew the special use permit. So moved. Motion Second. By Gatti, second by John Bainey. Any discussion? Roll call. Bigotti? Aye. Bainey? Aye. Aye. Marston? Aye. Aye. Uh, from town item number 13 from town assessor Judy Trafelski, resignation from a part-time clerk. Uh, please be advised Emily Halifax has resigned her employment with the town of Grand Isle effective March 25th, 2021. I'll entertain a motion to accept the resignation with a letter of report. Anybody make a motion? Yeah. Yeah. With that? I'll entertain a motion to accept the letter of resignation. Okay. Letter of regret. So moved. Motion of Pete Marston. Second. Second by Mike Madigan. Any discussion? Roll call. Marston? Aye. Madigan? Aye. Bainey? Aye. Gatti? Aye. 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 Communications General. Item number one from the Grand Island Central School District Solar Project on School Property, SBL number 23.00-3-5. And we'll open this up for Ms. Ruby Harris, representing uh, the Grand Island School District. Am I speaking again or oh, are your questions? First yours. <laughs> okay, um, the only, uh, just so we're all aware. Um, the only couple of things that I didn't mention before was the, the solar project for the school district is really being brought forth um, for an additional source of revenue, as well as doing some educational opportunities um, with the students in reference to solar energy. Um, there are many things, and, and I have no problem um, if the town does not have access to it. There are many things that were mentioned in the RFP, as well as the draft solar agreement. Um, we are still discussing that between both legal size, sides on how we expect that land to be turned back over to us. If you are not aware, um, it is only 12 acres of the entire property. Um, it is not the entire property being used. It's only about 12 acres. Um, and we really put this forth uh, because there were some questions on our end and we didn't want to get caught up on the later end because I, be I believe from my understanding through legal that we require um, site plan approval and special use permits uh, from the town. So that's really why it was placed as an agenda item. Okay. And just to confirm, you're saying only 12 acres will have solar panels on it? Yeah. Yes. From my understanding, I have um, both Peter and Keith here, um, but it is not the entire uh, acreage of the property. Um, that was something that was very uh, a very big sticking point once we received proposals. Um, Nexus was not the only company where we received proposals from, but we liked that they were only using a small... Um, section of the property and what their thought process was for the actual property and then the um, 
basically the compliance with our uh, decommissioning thoughts. So 12 acres, okay. Hmm. Um, Peter. Ruby, I'll, I'll start if that's fine. Um, Ruby, I, I have no negativity or, or um, my comments are a little bit different than probably could be expected. I will tell you right away, as Dr. Graham referenced in his uh, letter to us, there would be no legal ground for this. And you are entirely, completely right that um, special treatment is given to schools in these circumstances. So his letter that was drafted is completely okay. Um, some additional information to provide would be um, pertaining to the process that uh, Mike um, and Pete are involved in. Mike has sent us very detailed notes from the first session with developers and key stakeholders coming together. And it is um, far from what some could anticipate. It's not uh, developers saying, you know, we wanna try to get away with this or residents saying, please stop this. The conversations and the notes that have been presented to us are very progressive, um, very cutting edge in the sense that they're bringing up things that we would have never thought of in terms of barriers, in terms of materials to use. And I think this information could be incredibly helpful to you. We are um, not, you not being a developer, you're, you're tasked with, um, as a school district, managing the funding well and protecting our students well. And some of what's coming forward out of this process to inform our law is going to make this so much better and I think safer in some ways for our children. So you have every right to proceed as we see it. What we're asking is you take this opportunity, at least what I'm asking, others may feel different, is you take this opportunity where developers and property owners are working hand in hand trying to find a really wonderful revision to our solar law. The confidence there is great. And um, I, I really think it would be in your best interest to wait and see. I think it would make uh, taxpayers feel more confident in what you're endeavoring on. It would make parents, especially as you mentioned in here, me being a parent, you wanting to use this opportunity uh, to educate the students on solar energy. I don't know if that involves site visitation, but we're, we're learning some things from developers. They're speaking up about materials that are being used. So I would say, um, both sides of the equation, the school district has every right to proceed. And at the same time, I would plead with you all to wait a few more months until this process is over for what the school district, the taxpayers, the children, our community has to gain from this process. That's just my two cents, but so I, I beg you to wait. So I'd like to just um, build on exactly what uh, Jennifer said. And I'm gonna just share my screen real quick so that I can provide some details to what I'm saying. I'm able to, am I frozen? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. And it says proposed law at the top, right? Just making yeah, sure you- Yeah, it's there, okay. Right. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Okay, so um, just to start off with assurance relative to the timeline. Um, this town board, and I think I can speak for all five of us, are committed to meeting the moratorium six month deadline. I'm gonna just one qualifier. Sunday is the 18th of July. That's actually the date that the moratorium expires. It'd be the 19th when we're um, expecting to pass and vote on the law. If we need to meet more frequently than what I have listed here, we'll do that. Um, some activities will actually happen concurrent with the, there's a resident and developer committee, which are putting options together. And then there's going to be a number of meetings that the town board will hold to finalize the draft, um, do reviews with different uh, advisory boards, um, legal reviews, and get it ready for a public hearing on July 5th. Um, we could either pass it on July 5th or on July 19th, but regardless, our drop dead date is we will not be extending the moratorium um, other than the fact that it will be on the 19th instead of the 18th when the new law will be put into effect. So we will work hard and make sure that um, we don't exceed that. So that's one assurance that I wanna give the, the school board. Um, and just in terms of the information, um, what generated, why did this moratorium even come to exist? The reason why it came to exist was we had a number of residents um, in, in different areas of the island that were 
very unhappy with the way in which the current, the, the solar farms that have been put in place, um, the design standards that were used, the screening um, and other considerations. So there were a number of reasons why this was, um, this moratorium was put into effect. And a lot of residents were really concerned about the impact on the environment, um, safety, decommissioning, long-term and short-term concerns um, and impacts on the environment as well as safety and other things. And, and just a few things just in our first meeting, um, one of the developers um, gate brought to our attention that there are panels that are safe and there's panels that aren't safe. There's panels that have heavy metals in them, which are being used in solar farms in New York State is what we're being told. They have gallium, cadmium, and other um, heavy metals, which do actually leach and end up in the soil, the ground um, over time. So it can cause heavy metal contamination of the environment. Just that alone is a reason why I would encourage you to, to really consider there are resident concerns there's even developer concerns that have been brought to our, our attention. Why we want, we, why we are asking you to wait and um, hopefully update your RFP relative to um, the new law that will be going into effect by July 19th. So some of the things that we've brought up and um, which will affect you, I think, one is safety environmental concerns um, relative to the heavy metals. Another one is payment in lieu of taxes. Hopefully you didn't use the, the law that we, we've put into effect in the past for the other solar farms. One thing we've learned is um, it really looks like when we look at other municipalities, it looks like we've gone very low with our um, pilot pricing, um, possibly as much as two to three fold low. Um, so hopefully you didn't use our prior, our current um, solar farms that we put into place in the payment in lieu of taxes relative to how you're pricing it for the school. So something that you need to be aware of is we're looking at the pricing, looking at benchmarking relative to other municipalities, possibly even looking at other methods, maybe um, energy credits or what have you in terms of how, how we're gonna be compensated for the in place of taxes uh, for the law. Um, berms and foliage, foliage concerns, um, very deficient um, the, the law that currently is in effect, um, we have some very real concerns. Um, we had some very good um, discussions and we're actually putting some um, design standards in place. Something that I'm gonna guess, if you're going off of the old law, it's gonna have the same concerns and possibly the same upset residents if we're not gonna, if you're not gonna wait for the output from this law. Uh, decommissioning plan, where we see some deficiencies in the decommissioning plans. Um, setback requirements, we want to standardize them and set them appropriately. Um, Relooking at zoning and a number of other issues in terms of pesticides, herbicides, review of pollinator requirements, tree removal, removal restrictions and or offsets or compensation for wetlands, protection of prime agricultural soils and other things. So there's a number of things being considered um, how many of those things are going to be in the new law? I mean, definitely anything that's going to affect safety and, and um, safety and the environmental protection. Um, I think they'll seriously be considered, but you don't know what you don't know. And if you're looking at the law that pre-existed, um, what this committee is going to put out, um, and I think Peter Marston will even um, state that because um, he's a member, he and I are the co co-facilitating th these meetings, that there was a lot of great information, things that we've learned that we didn't know about. Um, I realized that Pete and Tom have met with the, the school board about this, but even since then, we've learned a lot, and this um, moratorium will result in, a, a, I think, a law that we can stand behind and be confident. We've looked out both for the best interests of the residents the environment, as well as the developers, because people do have the right to develop the land. We're not saying we're not gonna do solar farms. It's just that we wanna make sure we're doing them right. So sorry, I took so long, that's it for me. And I'll be br brief and just kind of follow up on what Mike said. Um, Mike, correct, I Pete and I, you know, we met with Ruby and with Dr. Graham. I, I think we may have still been working on the last amendment to the solar law. And Pete, correct me if I'm wrong, or Ruby, but the 
the tenor of that meeting was the fact that the district basically recognized that they didn't necessarily have to follow all of our laws, but you were trying to be a good neighbor and do so. And mm -hmm. I guess my plea to the district would be that even if you're not going to wait and you really need to move this along, get involved with Mike and Pete and, and talk to them about some of the issues that have come up, because certainly I think this, this district would agree, especially if you're going to have students there, you wouldn't want to be using panels that are going to be leaching heavy metals into the ground. So there's certainly um, some good information that's come up and I think it would be beneficial to you and certainly to the town to at least work together with Mike and Pete and the board and pay attention to some of the ideas that are being tossed around at that meeting, even if you're really dead set on going now. So. Um, yeah, so I'll echo what Tom said, I, I believe it was February, 2020 was when we last met on this Ruby. It was quite a while ago. Um, it was Tom, myself and, and, and you and Dr. Graham. And uh, we had a lot of good discussions and I could tell them that you were very much trying to do the right thing. Um, you guys did not want to be build it put anything in, in the place that was overbearing or that um, was a risk to the community. You really wanted to do it right. You really wanted to use it as a teaching tool for not just solar, but pollinators and plantings and all that other stuff. Um, I, I knew it was really important to you to, to do it right. Um, you know, you said something earlier twice. Um, is this solar plan, the solar project coming to the town for special use and to our planning board? Peter, I don't think it does, but uh, Peter Godfrey can correct me if I'm wrong. I think they are exempt from all of that. Yeah, there are zoning laws there. Not there. Uh, I only ask because Ruby said it. That's why I'm asking. I understand. Yeah, but I, I don't think that's a necessary step that they have to take. Okay. I don't think we have any actionable ability on that because they are governed by the state education department. Is that okay. correct, Godfrey? There, there are some pieces of our, our planning processes that, that we would work with the school district on. So I, I think it's, uh, I, I think that what Mr. S uh, what the supervisor was writing about was the uh, coverage under the uh, moratorium as a whole as being a bar to the project. But uh, I, I understand that the, the for just from, from Dr. Graham's communication that, that they wanted to work with the town through his processes as, as, as appropriate. And we would welcome that. Yes. Peter Sorgi, uh, quickly, do you have any idea how many megawatts the, the proposed facility would be? Uh, Keith, Keith could handle that um, real quick. Keith? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it is uh, three megawatts. Uh, as Ruby mentioned, we're not going to be occupying the, uh, uh, the full uh, area of the parcel. We are only occupying a small footprint. Uh, you know, by way of background, uh, we do develop other projects on publicly owned uh, property, um, and, and this is no different. Uh, in, in this sense, uh, what we tend to do is we tend to focus on, on land that's underutilized, um, and we tend not to disrupt any wetlands or any uh, natural resources that may be uh, within the land when we design this and when we initially propose this to, to Ruby uh, and team, it was really just on the area so that, you know, as Ruby mentioned, uh, you know, we would be maximizing or, or minimizing the uh, visibility from, from, from the street, from, from neighbors, we would be putting in the appropriate vegetation as such and, and adhering to, uh, you know, what, what the, the, uh, the highest of regulations that may be. So I guess if I can just kind of conclude, all we're really asking for today is just confirmation on, you know, that, that, that we're not subject to the moratorium, which I, I think we're all in agreement with, and it's pretty clear law. I will say that I, I was the one pushing, trying to get this confirmation just because, and I'll, I'll give you a lot of credit, um, as somebody, as an attorney who is on the wrong side of mor moratoriums <laughs> a, a lot, 90% uh, of them get extended past the initial six months or whatever it says. And I was listening to the work session and I really appreciated the fact that you had a timeline and you were gonna meet the timeline and it wasn't like most of them that just go on for 12, 18 months. And that's great. Um, our role from a zoning perspective is really to kind of give you notice. These are our plans, we wanna work with you and we will incorporate all those things. And uh, 
somebody from our team will will certainly reach out to get the notes and maybe even attend a meeting or listen in on the next uh, the next meeting so we can really understand how you want it developed. And, and that was my next statement that perhaps you you just want to listen in on the next meeting so you can understand the whole premise. Yeah, Keith will do that, I'm sure. Okay. So I don't believe there's any action required on that. Anybody have any, anything different? No. Okay. Jen, uh, can you hear me? Can people hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, Mike. Oh, sorry. Um, so two things. One question for the developers is, um, are you using silicone panels or the other type of panel? Are these to be silicone? They're asking which one are we using? Correct. Yeah, these are, are, are uh, silicone uh, based. Silicon based. Silicon, that's yeah. what I meant, yes. Yeah. Okay, um, and the other is, so one thing I would just emphasize, so it was a unanimous five and O oh, um, vote by the town board. Um, residents have some very real concerns. We're uncovering some real concerns. They're, we're still very early in that process, but we're, we're moving fairly rapidly. Um, I'm not, I, I guess one of my big concerns from what I'm hearing is if you've already issued an RFP, um, a contract, I'm not convinced that you're incorporating some of the concerns that we're identifying. So I do think there's concerns. Um, and I would hope that you fully comply with um, the, the intent of the law, which is to make sure the neighbors, the residents, the environment are protected. Um, and I would, I would hope that you would respect the town board's position, which is five and all um, regarding um, the moratorium and um, the residents as well in terms of um, some of the considerations that are gonna be um, placed into the new law and um, compliance with that, that law as well as compliance with the, the moratorium. Thanks. Thank you. I just, just add one quick thing. Um, our plans are not ready yet. I mean, we're, we're, we're still working on the plan. So this is not something we're gonna have plans ready tomorrow. Right? We probably have another month to go on, on those plans. Um, but I think they've shown that they really do want to be respectful of, of what the town's intent is. I'll be very honest with you. My advice, and I had to look at it just objectively and coldly, was you don't even have to go to the town. Just, just don't do it. Keith and Ruby said, no, 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 we want to, we want to go. We want to be very upfront and open. Um, I wasn't trying to pull anything off. I was just explaining their legal obligation, which I didn't feel required this meeting. They wanted to do it, and I think that's great. And that's why we're here. So we, we certainly will... Uh, We'll work. We'll look at all those things and, and, and incorporate that in our plan. Thank you, Mr. Sorge. Uh, thank you, Dr. Harris, for your informative information. And again, Mike and Pete, thank you for the work you're doing with respect to uh, getting keeping us on track and moving this uh, for new solar law amendments to uh, fruition. Yeah. That brings us to the report of the audit committee, item number 15. Michael. Or Jen. Jen. Oh, I know Jen had it because Jen was out of. I'm the second. I screwed that up. It's Jen and Mike this time. Okay. I, um, yeah, I, I did it on Friday. Okay. Make a motion to spend the following amounts from the following accounts. General fund, $247,211.45. That line amended, of course. Highway fund, $24,496.64. Sewer fund, $45,596.36. Water fund, $24,339.08. Capital fund, $91,244.27. And refuse and garbage fund, $131,151.60 for the amended grand total of $564,039.46. Second by Mike Madigan. Any discussion? Roll call. Spaney? Aye. Madigan? Aye. Harston? I have to recuse. I have a, a voucher in the audit. Gabby? Aye. Aye. Item number 16, unfinished business. Lift call hydraulics, 1865 Grand Island Boulevard. Uh, same thing we have to do the seeker review on that. Um, 
the short environmental assessment form for the part two project impact analysis. Um, there were all the questions were answered as no or small impact may occur. So I'll entertain a motion to uh, have a negative declaration for that project. So move. Motion by Pete Marston. Second. Second. Second by Tom Degatti. Any discussion on the on that? Roll call. Marston. Aye. Degatti. Aye. Hadigan. Aye. Amy. Aye. Aye. Entertain a motion to approve the site plan for 1865 Grand Island Boulevard. So moved. Second. Motion by Mike Reagan, second by Jen Beatty. Any discussion on that? Just this is a brand new business to the town of Grand Island, so we're pretty excited. Thank you, Pete. Roll call. Okay. Yeah. The four trees planted across the front of the property for the design and and, uh, yeah, subject to uh, planning board recommendations. So moved. Second. Okay. We, can we have some discussion on that real quick? Sure. Yes. So there was, there was, if I remember correctly, there was questions regarding screening, um, whether it was equitable or not. And there was also a discussion about sidewalks, um, whether they should be omitted or not. I believe the planning board recommended that sidewalks be omitted from the plan. I'm not sure that the board knows that, so I'm just being full disclosure. Is that, that's not what we're approving right now though, are we? I would want to know more information on that. Well, that, that, that was the recommendation of the planning board was to omit the sidewalks because there are none down there. However, it is a sewer district. Um, the big concern was is future sidewalk development if it would actually align or it wouldn't. So there was a little bit of discussion with that one. I just want the board to understand what they're doing. So that's how hmm. the motion to accept the planning board's recommendation on site plan approval with the following conditions and right. put that into the motion. The board is okay. There's a board in agreement with the planning board's recommendations of four trees across the front of the property for design and performance standards and asking the town board to waive the sidewalks until such time as deemed necessary and the entrance island. Can you read that one more time, John? Sorry. Uh, site plan, uh, layer recommended the site plan be approved. Greco and layer recommended the site plan be approved with four trees across the front of the property per design and performance standards and asking the town board to waive sidewalks until such time as deemed necessary and the entrance island. Pete, would you clarify what they mean by and the entrance island? So the entrance island would be a split entrance, ent entrance egress. Um, so commonly an island that's in between, you know, the, the incoming and the ongoing, tra outgoing traffic. That be installed? Pardon me? Is the planning board asking that that not be installed? That is correct. I didn't you know. I, I got to say, regard, it's a lot easier just to have the the sidewalks installed. I'd, I would rather understand that one better than to you know retroactively require them we know what kind of a struggle that is right i mean if it's always required why are we making an exception this is on grand island boulevard right yes 65 grand island boulevard i mean sidewalks all the way down the web so I felt a little better because of the when deemed necessary, but I understand that that can be hard to enforce. Correct. I'll like, tell you right now, after the fact, if it's five years from today and we just realize that it was a bad mistake, right? they're Pete, not going to be thrilled the, about I, that. that. That'll be a big revolt. I need Pete to expand a little bit more on the planning board's thought when, you know, as deemed necessary, did they think they wouldn't ever be need, needed or was there a reason where they were temporarily saying they well, wouldn't be needed yet? I, I don't think they they were under the premise that they would never be needed, okay. but where they're, where they're actually called for in the design standards is probably gonna cover up a bunch of infrastructure and just be a bad move. It's, it's really the wrong spot to put them on that site. Um, the site's a little bit unique that way. Um, so everybody was concerned of doing them twice and would they preferred not to do them at all. I don't know that I 
fully agree with that. I, I really feel that we should keep our foot on the gas regarding putting sidewalks in our town center. Um, we've just went through a, a massive, um, you know, sidewalk undertaking, and it's great. People are using it, and I know it'll be a sidewalk to nowhere. But at one but point, not, sidewalk not really though, Pete. Is it? No. I think it, it goes to at home. least the fun center. It goes almost right to where they are. No, no, it's this is the other end. This is down by, um, so next to the um, Old McMahon's restaurant. Oh, wait. currently there's no sidewalks adjacent, Sorry. but in the future, hopefully there will be. I would, I would err on the side and put the sidewalks in now. I would agree. In in that section, it's going to be sidewalked at some point yeah. in time yes. with more development. Right. It was and, a very lengthy discussion with the planning board. And they were at odds with it. They didn't know what to do. So I believe they sent them forth the way they did to let us make the decision. Yeah. I mean, the utilities concern that's going to exist at every single property. So I don't think that's unique. That's always going to be in that zone, I would think. So can we kind of word it where the, where the developer could actually come to us with a sidewalk plan? Well, he puts, them in, he puts the sidewalks on his site plan. Yeah. Yeah. And he installs them to get his CO. Okay. I would agree with the trees across the front. I'd be okay with the elimination of the entrance island mm -hmm. in the driveway, but I think they should install the sidewalks. Agreed. As drawn. Yeah. In that location. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But we need to amend the motion then, right? Right. Just so, we accept the planning board recommendation, except with respect to sidewalks, which shall be required. So approve the site plan. Mm -hmm. um, accepting the planning board's recommendations as conditions, with the exception of the recommendation as the sidewalks, which shall be required as per the plan. Right. So yeah. Right. We're going to call the move. We have a motion by Mike Madigan, a second by Jen Bainey. Oh, it was my motion. Sorry. Okay. Yes. So moved. And uh, second is fine. My Jen's okay with a second. Roll yeah. Call. Vote, Michael. Yeah, I. I didn't hear you, Patty. Sorry. Bainey. I. Yeah, we lost sound for a minute, guys. Carson. Hi. Hi. Whitney. Hi. I don't know why you guys can't hear. I hear perfectly. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Item number two is Kinderkin's Daycare at 2710 Grand Island Boulevard. Um, site plan approval, master plan, reuse of an empty building. This is a type two action under seeker. There is no, uh, no seeker action required, but we do need to approve the site plan. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Pete Marston, second by Mike Madigan. Any discussion on this? Roll call. Marston? Aye. Madigan? Aye. 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 Whitney? Aye. The third uh, unfinished business item was from uh, Larry Playfair at the Island Ship Center, 1879 Whitehaven Road, site plan approval slash master plan for an office and a warehouse building. We do have to do a seeker determination on this. Uh, I gotta get to a part two. All of the uh, questions on the impact <coughs> were answered as no or small impact may occur. So I'll entertain a motion for a negative declaration with respect to seeker for this project. So moved. Motion by Tom Bugatti. Second. Second by Pete Marston. Any discussion on the seeker? Roll call. Bugatti? Aye. Marston? Aye. Madigan? Aye. Amy? Aye. Whitney? Aye. Uh, we do need to approve a site plan as well. So I'll take a motion to approve the site plan. So moved. Second. Motion by Tom Gatti, second by Pete Myerson. 
Any discussion on that? Roll call. Zagati? Aye. Arston? Aye. Madigan? Aye. Bainey? Aye. Whitney? Aye. At this point, uh, I would like to entertain a motion to suspend the rules to adopt the fee schedule from Parks and Recreation. So moved. Second. Second by Jen Bainey. Roll call. Bigotti? Aye. Bainey? Aye. Madigan? Aye. Marston? Aye. Aye. Tom, I'll let you take it from here with respect to the uh, fee schedule that you're talking about. Um, I'll just make a motion to uh, approve the amended parks fee schedule, the copy of which was circulated and discussed during the uh, workshop meeting. So moved. Motion by Tom Bugatti, second by Mike Madigan. Any further discussion on that? Um, yeah. Just a request, kind of as we spoke about, that this kind of becoming stay a living document. Let's keep working on it. Let's not wait till every yearly reorg. Um, if we see things and we get to somewhere on the other parts of our discussions, we, we implement them. And one thing we do need to get on sooner rather than later is whatever we're going to do as far as rental of the pavilions that have been constructed at Vets Park, because Natalie has received quite a few inquiries. Um, not that I think it's the type of thing that the town should ever endeavor to make money off of. But I think having some kind of reservation process would ensure that people who want to use it are going to get a chance to use it instead of having just whoever shows up. So there's a bunch of things we got to look at. I'll make sure the Barks and Rec Advisory Board stays on um, revamping it. As we discussed before, there's going to be issues that are going to need to be tackled by this board rather than the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, but it's a step in the right direction. <coughs> okay. Okay. Roll call. Zagati? Aye. Madigan? Aye. Bainey? Aye. Marston? Aye. Whitney? Aye. That brings us to the portion of the agenda, item number 17, public comments. Anyone wish to speak on any particular item whatsoever? You can do that now. Just uh, put your cue into Mr. Zagati in the chat box. Or just unmute yourself and give it a whirl because there's not many people left. So okay. yeah, we're we're way down on numbers. Comments for three minutes or less. Okay, uh, we'll declare that portion of the meeting closed. From the town board, we'll start with Mr. Guy because he soldiered through this whole thing. In the I got nothing tonight. <laughs> Actually, I lied. One thing, Crawford will kill me if I forget. I actually have two things. One, the lion spaghetti dinner is still happening. The 26th, right, Dick? Um, so you can get your tickets for that um, through the Lions Facebook page. Another thing that I agreed I would bring up here is one of Dick's um, one of Dick's employees, Chuck Berlinger, handmade a cuckoo clock that he is putting up for auction and the proceeds are going to benefit the Gopper. Um, I'm trying to find the, I thought he sent me a email, but I don't see it, but you can get those. I think he's in the process of maybe making a Facebook page, but the tickets are $20. The, the clock, I wish I had a picture of it because it's just fantastic. Beautiful. Um, and I'll pull one up. I'll pull one up while you guys are talking. But if anybody's interested, it is out on um, grand idea, grander ideas too. Just so you know. Yeah, I'll pull that up while you guys finish your statements, and I, I can show it at the end. That's all I had. Thanks. Thanks, Jen Bain. Um, just a reminder: on April twenty fourth is Clean Up Grand Island. Um, it's our second one, and already it's proving so exciting. I know Dick. Um, Eric Feeblecorn and Debbie, our, our uh, citizen rep, would just tell you it's so exciting to be on this end of it with the planning. We've got every day a call from someone. There's soccer teams. There's Cub Scouts. Um, today, I was having lunch at Chick-fil-A um, in warm weather, and uh, uh, someone from Fresenius Cobby called, and they said, you know, we have over a thousand plus employees, and we want to participate. 
So they're circulating a sign-up sheet. Um, last year was kind of getting the word out and trying to do something outside. And last year people heard about it and this year is the year they wanna participate. So contact myself, Dick, Debbie, if you know her, um, or Eric Fubelcorn, if you're a business and wanna get a group involved. But seriously, the excitement around this event is very invigorating. And because um, I committed, and I like to keep my word, um, a couple meetings back, I did say I'm committed to bringing this forward in a comment at every meeting that we have. It is no secret that our children and our families on Grand Island are struggling. I beg any and all stakeholders at any level to unconventionally, if necessary, advocate for what is wise and right when it comes to educating our children. That's all I've got. Thank you, John. Yep. Mike Madigan. Two items. Um, I do see Her uh, Ms. Harris is still on the, the, uh, the she's suffered through all this uh, meeting so far. Um, if you could, could you just send the town board um, maybe one or two folks, it could be a developer as well as an appropriate representative from the school. Um, so I can send the Zoom invite for the next several meetings uh, for the re related to the moratorium and law development. Yes, I made a note already. I did see the next meeting is April 15th. So I wrote it down, but I will um, reach out to gather additional information, but there will be a school rep and a Perfect. developer rep. And yeah, if, if you just email the email myself or the town board and I'll send the Zoom invite. Um, I'm sending it out tomorrow, but I'll just forward it if you haven't got me the names by that time. So okay. sorry, that was more than just a little bit of a comment. Thank you, Ruby. Um, and then uh, two other things. One is um, we know the schools, um, even um, Superintendent Graham has emphasized that like Jennifer said, he's in writing, he's actually saying he knows that keeping the schools partially closed is doing more harm and not protecting the kids um, that the schools can be safely opened. That knowledge, having that knowledge that we're doing more harm than we are protecting the kids, we have an obligation to protect the kids. Um, I, we need to do whatever it takes. I would like to see um, Superintendent Graham lobbying for right in front of, go to Albany if you have to. Just like you're lobbying for solar, we need to lobby for the kids. We, not just letters, lobbying directly with, for the kids. Um, we know that harm is being done. We need to open up the schools. And we, need, we need to not wait weeks or months. We need to open them as soon as possible. And the only other thing is June 5th is the uh, De Glopper Memorial um, dedication or opening ceremony. And um, it'll be a great event. Uh, people, put it on your calendar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike Pete Marston. Just think spring. Okay. <laughs> All right. Tonight we uh, we have uh, said we're going to move forward with some things, provided that when we get there, we're able to do them. But National Night Out and our Fourth of July parade. Uh, and then the last thing we have is today's Dingus Day. So happy Dingus Day, everybody. Uh -huh. Great. All right. So a motion is in order to adjourn tonight's meeting at 9.32 p.m. So moved. So moved. Motion by Mike Madigan, second by Pete Marston. Forever. <laughs> by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That's carried. Please rise. And I will observe a moment of silence in memory of Nancy Hayes, Roxalana Pegas, Jack Pajewski, Gene Crowell, Mark Wisemore, Theron Bastion, Patrick Devlin, William Popovich, John Jack Thompson, Julia Ballister, Thomas Hayes, Michael Wall, Joanne Moscati, and Kathleen Lampier. We're adjourned. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.